So before we actually start today, I want to give a big shout out to Anime Slayer. Not only is he the one responsible for the clip that we're about to see, but he's also the one who clipped it. So I know that I didn't have an intro slide for him and I wanted to give him a shout out. Big ups Anime Slayer. <laughs> Anime Slayer. Now here's, this is actually really hilarious. I got, this one I got to call out because this one is actual bullshit. Okay. This is from Anime Slayer and he does a dollar tip. And I'm not going to take this out on Anime Slayer because I don't, I'm not angry that he said this. I, you know, we can address it. Something about the way that you open this up, DSP, really makes me question whether or not you're telling the truth here. I have a sneaking suspicion that you are going to take this out on Anime Slayer and that you're going to be a huge dickhead during it. I think people don't like Final Fantasy VII, unfortunately, because you have a stigma to JRPGs. Every time you play one, you point out things about Japanese culture you dislike or you demean otaku culture. It's a turnoff. I can tell when the beach segment of Final Fantasy VII happens, you'll make fun of people for enjoying it. 100% a valid point. I don't think that that's necessarily the only reason that people don't want to watch him play JRPGs. Because there really is a host of reasons, but this is definitely one of them. And when it comes to the upcoming beach scene in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you're 100% right there as well. In fact, we didn't even get there yet, and DSP has already addressed it. He's already talked about how it's immature and has no place in the game. He's made it very clear that he's already uncomfortable about it, how it's fan service that didn't need to be in the game. And like I said, we're not even there yet. So you listen to negative memes about me and you actually judge a playthrough that just began on a negative meme that hasn't even happened in the playthrough yet. That's what you're saying. You're literally saying, well, because Final Fantasy VII is going to have one beach scene out of a 60 plus hour playthrough. And because of that one scene, he may make a comment that this is kind of immature, that this is in the game. The entire playthrough sucks. No, that's not what they were saying at all, actually. You've completely missed the point. Anime says actually talking about all of your JRPG playthrough, and in a roundabout way also addressing all of the games that you've played that have heavy Japanese influence. Because more often than not, these games that do draw heavily from Japanese culture do have some sort of sexual content in them, whether it just be busty player models, a reference or a scene that takes place in a hostess club, or really anything to do with sexuality at all. I'm not saying every Japanese-style game, but it seems pretty free frequent. And without fail, if that's content that's going to be in the game, DSP is going to do a segment about it. DSP is going to address it, and he's going to act like a prude the entire time. So no, it's not just this one playthrough that's going to suffer from this DSP. It's all of your playthroughs. What the fuck is wrong with people like that? No, really. I have to ask you this question. What is wrong with you? This is a 60 hour game with tons of gameplay elements. Awesome narrative. Great combat right now that I'm actually getting better at and learning. I learned something at the end of the last stream last night. I was like, oh, that's interesting. You know, tons of content that I'm loving. Absolutely loving the game. I told you, actually, this is stacking up to be a great game. Maybe one of my game of the year picks, I'm thinking, right? But the playthrough sucks because there's going to be a beach scene where I'm going to make a comment that I don't like that everyone's in bikinis. What the fuck are you talking about? You're already lining this game up to be your game of the year and you've only played it for what, 11 hours now? I thought you couldn't give an honest judgment on a game until you beat it. But now all of a sudden, 11 hours into this Final Fantasy remake and you've pretty much decided it's your game of the year? Something about that's not adding up. But it doesn't matter how good the combat or the story or the graphics are, DSP, the game can be great on its own. Your playthrough can still be bad because you're there and your attitude towards pretty much everything is just miserable. Especially when it comes to, again, anything that's sexual. Something as trivial as girls in bikinis at the beach is enough to sour your mood before you even get there because I want to say this again, DSP already addressed the beach scene and he didn't even get there yet. That's how concerned he is about content like that. Really? What the fuck? Just listen to what you just said. <laughs> right? Like, huh? That makes no sense whatsoever. Listen, be immature, say what you want. I don't have to participate in that kind of commentary or whatever. I don't. And that's fine. But I'm not going to say... Do you really think that when that scene comes up, we're just going to pause the playthrough and I'm going to go on a two-hour rant about how, how horrible it is that scene's in the game? No, probably not then and there, and it's definitely not going to be two hours. But we will get those segments. We'll get them during the pre-stream. We might even get multiple of those segments on the pre-stream, several days apart and probably about 15 to 20 minutes apiece. 
similar to how we constantly get those Baldur's Gate 3 romance segments all the time. So you can sit there and pretend like this is completely out of the question. This is absolutely ludicrous, but it's just another day in the Snortex. This is the normal around here. Those kind of segments are just par for the course. But of course, he's going to say that I'm wrong and that it's totally fine if that's what you're into. He's just not going to participate and that's totally fine. We can agree to disagree. No, it's a Japanese game. It's part of their culture. They like that kind of silly stuff. In fact, what, what a lot of people don't realize about this, and when they have scenes with like, oh, there's risque clothing or a sexual reference, they actually find that comedic. They don't find that like, oh, it's perverted. They think of it as comedy. Like, sexual content is part of Japanese comedy, correct? They'll have that in there to get a laugh. Why is he acting as though this is exclusive to Japanese culture? Why is he sitting here pretending like American culture doesn't also have this? Like this isn't a feature, like raunchy comedies don't exist. Was he not known for that exact style of commentary back in the day, the raunchy sexual style commentary that he claims people used to find hilarious? Or is he just pretending that now that he doesn't do that style of commentary that it's completely removed from all American culture and media? Because obviously it's his way or the highway. He's the main character, dude. So that scene to Japanese people is funny. Ha ha, look, here's Barrett. He's going to be in a sailor suit and cloud in, in a, you know, skimpy Speedo underwear and the girls in bikinis. Ha ha, it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's funny. Wait, where did he see Cloud in a Speedo? Cloud was very clearly in normal length swim trunks. You know, the kind that go like down to your knee or directly above your knee. I'm starting to think that maybe DSP was doing some uh, behind the scenes style research on Cloud in his swimsuit. But this just goes to show you DSP's view on the entire situation. He just admitted that he's uncomfortable about girls being in bikinis at the beach. How is that an uncomfortable situation? Where else are girls supposed to be in bikinis? Last I knew that was the exact purpose of bikinis to begin with was to go to the beach and be in the water right they get a laugh out of it but they don't perv over it but people do i'm sorry but if you're gonna try and convince me that zero japanese people are perving out about tifa's yonkers in the beach scene you're out of your goddamn mind there's no way you're convincing me of that and then they think oh you see well if you don't like that you hate it what are you talking about i like just because I, I i might not want to partake in a scene like that because I'm 40 some years old and I'm happily married and I don't look for that in video games because I'm past that point in my life doesn't mean the playthrough sucks. It's literally one scene. It's going to last, what, two minutes out of a 60 hour playthrough. The fact that you even said that in the tip is remarkable. I mean, <laughs> wow. Anyone who has that mindset, you got to reevaluate yourself. If you think that someone's playthrough of a video game sucks because there was one optional silly joke scene added in by the Japanese game devs, and a person may, it didn't even happen yet. The person may say something like, oh, this is silly. Why is this in there? Like, what are you talking about? That's what I'm saying, DSP. What are you talking about? Because the only person who needs to reevaluate themselves is you. You can be happily married and 41 years old and not be completely weirded out by people at the beach. Because in case you weren't aware, there is nothing inherently sexual about being at the beach. You're the one who was making this about that. You're the one who's getting hung up on this. Your weird aversion to this style of content is the reason that this is constantly being brought up. This is why people are constantly talking about it and making you address it. Because it's just very strange. There's really no reason to be like this. And luckily for us in this clip, Anime Slayer provided some of this proof about DSP being weird about hostess clubs to prove that this isn't the first time he's behaved like this around some Japanese sentient trick stuff. So I'm just going to let that play out for you before we go into the second clip. Is this really how everyone on the internet is in 2024? I mean, that's ridiculous. What an insane statement. <laughs> I can't believe it. You need to do this. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, I'm sure either one is going to be so respectably conservative, right? Right. So it doesn't really matter. You know, each one's going to be stupid. Here, we'll just, we'll just fucking click this one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Here we go. He's fucking Japanese. There's nothing you can do about it. Good fucking lord. They love this shit. Once again, I don't get it. In Japan, they go to clubs like this and they pay money to spend time to talk to people who are half naked, right? But you get nothing out of it. It's virtual relationship because in Japan they're so into their own culture of work 
that they don't have real relationships. A lot of people anyway. <clears throat> but of course, DSP, we're not going to get a segment like that when it comes to the beach scene in Final Fantasy. How could we? And in a similar vein to this, I want to take a look at another interaction that DSP had with someone. And that person is, of course, Expand Dong. So I guess big ups you. So, all right. So if you guys have anything to talk about, please tag me in the chat. We'll have a little bit of Q&A to end the show today. Expand Dong says, what is the happy medium between you doing side stuff in Final Fantasy VII versus skipping it? Even big stuff like the Deku Tree and Zelda, people scolded you for both. Isn't it contradictory? Yes. Expand Dong, you have to understand something. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't when you're DSP. That's just the way of life around here for me, and I've gotten used to it. Oh, cut the pity party, DSP. You've got no one to blame for this but yourself. You're the one that's attracted all of these people throughout the year, all of these naysayers, all of these people who love to debunk your bullshit. Had you not been such a weirdo in your early years, the detractor thing wouldn't have caught on nearly as well as it did. And I find it really irritating the way that he bounces back and forth between thinking that he's the hottest shit on the planet. You're throwing these little pity parties, oh, what was me? Nothing I do is ever good enough. It's never correct. People are never happy. Because this is Mr. Oh, nothing is black and white there's always a gray area there's always a middle ground but here he is constantly flipping between those two extremes all right i'm gonna give you some examples okay <clears throat> so dsp the quality of all your gameplay sucks you still use a camera pointed at the tv you gotta go modern you gotta capture you gotta jump in and live stream okay i'll do that but that's not exactly how that scenario played out, was it, DSP? People asked and begged you for years to go to direct capture. They asked and begged you for years to start live streaming your content. And you fought tooth and nail to not switch over. Actively trying to gaslight people into believing that the way that you were doing things was the superior way to do it, and there was no way that you could do the same style of content the way they were asking you to do it. And then when you finally did make the switch, you made it in such a half-assed attempt that it came out like garbage. And then for multiple years after making Making the switch, you would try and improve your content very subtly to try and catch up to where everybody else was at years ago, making you fall even further behind the crowd. DSP, the quality of your gameplay sucks. You don't put enough time and dedication into your playthroughs. You rush through them. You don't do side content. You gotta take more time to play the games rather than rushing through them. Okay, I'll start doing that. And that was another valid criticism, DSP. You were beating games at a lightning pace so that you could get those day one views and be the first person to have a full playthrough on YouTube. This is a genuine question for anybody watching this. How many of you know somebody that beat the entire story of Red Dead Redemption in two or three days? We'll even just go with three days, be generous. Because if you ask me, there's no way that you're actually enjoying Red Dead Redemption if you're beating it in three days and not playing it again. There's no way that you're experiencing those freaks and stranger missions. There's no way you're hunting for the treasure. There's no way that you're going hunting to make money and upgrade your weapons. And while you don't have to do 100% out of all of those activities, enjoying some of those activities every once in a while is something that is kind of required if you ask me when playing Red Dead Redemption. Especially if you're going to be playing it for an audience because you should be showing them at least some of the side content. And he just wasn't doing that back then. Literally none of it. DSP, your gameplay sucks. Your commentary is too immature. Your commentary is all about sex and, you know, race and all this stuff that's so cringe risque for teens. You got to grow up. Everyone on YouTube is changing for the better. Okay, I'll change that. I don't know if you're starting to see a pattern here, but all of these criticisms that he's throwing out, all of these examples are accurate and valid criticisms that needed to be made. Because nobody wanted to hear the DSP racism commentary or about how he was trying to sleep with every single female character that ever stepped on the screen. Sure, maybe every once in a while it could be a funny joke if told by somebody who had any sort of charm and wit. But that's definitely not DSP. He was just using it to fill dead air because he didn't have anything else to say. DSP, your gameplay sucks. Your videos are of the wrong length. You have to increase the length of your video, or maybe you have to shorten the length of your video. No one can agree, but it doesn't matter. Your gameplay still sucks. Change it. And I think the reason that nobody can agree on it, according to DSP, is because there's really two different ways to do it. He can either play for extended periods of time and just make highlight videos like a lot of content creators do, where they turn a four-hour play session into about a 30-minute video total. Or he could just play for the entire session and upload the raw VOD to YouTube like a bunch of other content creators do. Hell, he could even do a combination of both if he really wants to double dip on the content. He could upload the raw VODs and then make a highlight video for anybody who doesn't 
doesn't want to watch the entire thing. But as it stands right now, he cuts his entire play session up into one hour increments and then uploads five different one hour videos. I'm just failing to see who that's going to appeal to. Sure, there's definitely people out there that are willing to watch one hour long videos, but those same people are also probably willing to watch a four hour long video if you provide them timestamps so that they can come and go as they please and know where they left off. But you're not going to get people who are interested in watching short form content that way. And the whole thing just seems to be making more work for DSP than is really necessary. Like I said, I think the real solution is just to upload the raw VODs and do highlight videos. But that's obviously too much work for DSP because not only does it require actually editing something, but it would mean that he'd have to watch back his own footage and he cannot be bothered to do that. Unless of course that footage is about a decade old, in which case he'd totally watch it, except it's gotta go on the throwback channel, dude. DSP, your thumbnails suck. You auto select thumbnails off of YouTube, why do you do that? Wait, now you're actually generating thumbnails? Well, those thumbnails are way too generic. You need to make better thumbnails than that. Auto-generating thumbnails is kind of a crime if you ask me. You should be making thumbnails for your videos. It screams higher production quality, but if you're not actually making thumbnails, you should at least be picking a thumbnail. Get your own screenshot from the video, one that you actually want to put on screen, one that is going to catch people's eyes because that's the entire point of a thumbnail. It's supposed to be interesting. It's supposed to make people want to click on the video. And that's the exact same point when they tell you that yours are too generic. Your thumbnails don't stand out. They don't tell a story. They don't make people want to click on the video. They're just nondescript gameplay screenshots. Who's going to click on that? There's no personality. There's no charm. There's no passion. It's just gameplay. They can just get gameplay from anywhere. DSP, your titling sucks. Your titling on your videos has to be better. You can't just have a number. Oh wait, now you've started adding actual descriptors to your videos to say what's in the video? That's not good enough either. Don't you know you're supposed to have clickbait on every single title of every video and that clickbait has to be the first thing you read when you see the video so people can see it? And this is just DSP once again addressing the fact that he doesn't actually know how clickbait works. He doesn't understand that if you make an interesting title and the thing actually happens in the video, it's not actually clickbait. Because the term clickbait implies some sort of dishonesty, some sort of deception. But if you just tell people up front that something interesting is going to happen in the part to make them click on it, that's not clickbait as long as it's true. And of course, if you're going to put an interesting thing in your title, it should be the first thing that people see. It should be the front of the title because most people don't wind up reading the latter half of the title because it gets cut off. That only requires a basic understanding of how YouTube works as a site, how it works on mobile even. And there's nothing inherently wrong with trying to get people to click on your videos. That should be your entire goal. You should be trying to get people to watch your content. If not, then I really don't understand why you're uploading content to begin with. Because I know that this channel is not a personal archive for you. So that you could go back a decade later and take a look back at all the fun times that you used to have. Wait, now that I say that out loud, it kind of seems like maybe it was. Given the DSP throwback exists and all. Okay. All right, let's continue. DSP, your streams suck. You ignore your chat. You don't talk to anyone. What's up with that? What's the point of streaming? What's fan service? I never heard of it. Oh wait, now you're actually interacting with your chat? Well that's, that sucks. You talk with your chat too much and now we've lost the appeal of your videos where you're just focused on the game. You're too distracted by your chat now. And this is another one of those situations where he needs to find the happy medium. He needs to find the middle ground. Because both of those statements can be true at the same time, simultaneously if you will. Because it is absolutely goofy as hell to have a stream chat and not talk to them, not interact with them, not take their feedback on anything. Because that's one of the major factors that makes videos and streaming so much different. The ability to interact with your chat makes streaming just a different experience. But with that, you have to understand that you're also supposed to be making a certain style of content. So you can't just just sit there on stream and talk all day long unless that's specifically your style of content. But that's not you, you're supposed to be doing gameplay. So there definitely can be an over-reliance on chat during your content, especially when they're constantly hand-holding you the way that they do. And it's very obvious if you watch any of your own content. There are just very large sections during gameplay where there is nothing going on on screen because you've quit playing and you're reading the chat. If you want to interact with chat that much, you need to be able to play the game and read chat at the same time. It really is simple as. I can keep going, all right? Let's, I mean, th literally, these are all things over the last 10 to 15 years that people have said. I directly listened to criticism. I changed for supposedly the better just for people to come back and tell me you're still doing it wrong.
That's because you are not keeping up with the standard DSP. You are not willing to adapt on your own without being constantly hounded about it. So it's great that you switched to direct capture, but you refuse to upgrade your quality in any other way for several years afterwards. It's great that you started interacting with your chat, but you never really learned how to do it properly in a manner that fit your content. It's great that you started to not do auto-generated thumbnails, again, should be a crime, but it really just seems to lack any sort of passion on your end. And that's what a lot of other content creators on the site have DSP. They have passion for this. They have passion for video games or whatever hobby they're into that they make content about. And I can say this till I'm blue in the face, but I think that that's a lot of DSP's problem. That's why he's always falling behind. That's why it seems like he might be outright refusing to improve his content because he doesn't have passion for it. He doesn't personally want to improve it. If it makes him money, if it just seems to work for now, he's completely content with that. And that's not a mentality that you should have when you go into this. That's not a mentality you should have when you're supposed to be operating your own business. Every day I get done with these videos or I get off of a stream, I'm immediately thinking about, okay, but in the next video, what am I going to change that's going to make it a little bit better? What am I going to do on the next stream? Let's plan that out. And it doesn't always come to fruition in the very next piece of content. Sometimes I sit on ideas and it seems like the content is pretty much the same for an extended period of time, but I am thinking all the time. I can't say that about DSP. He's not looking to do anything different almost ever. It's just about what game is coming out next. Okay. So, <clears throat> perfect example. Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I start playing the game, and immediately I tell you guys, wow, a lot of this side content doesn't seem very interesting or meaningful to me. I'm going to skip it, and I'm going to do the things that only seem meaningful or the things that lead to story. My playthrough is still very lengthy. I still easily get through and beat the game. And people tell me, oh, your playthrough sucked because you skipped all the side content. Wow, what a horrible playthrough you did, right? So now I'm playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Wow, I'm really enjoying this side content. I think the pacing is well done. You do a big story beat that's like five, six hours. Then you get to an open world segment. You do side content for five, six hours. And the alternation formula will probably work really well. I'm really enjoying this. Let me go ahead and do all the side content. Oh, Phil, you're doing it wrong. Don't you know that's boring to your audience? Why are you doing the side content? You should be skipping it all and just going right to the story. We're tired. We want story. It's like, what? Do you not see the difference in the games though, Phil? The content that you were skipping in Tears of the Kingdom were dungeons, dungeons with puzzles, dungeons with puzzles that lead to actual character upgrades that would have made the game better for you. The side content that you're doing in Final Fantasy VII is not that. And this might seem hard to believe, but I actually watched it, even though I'm a non-gameplay style viewer. Most of the time, it just seemed like he was running around the open world, collecting shit off the ground and doing miscellaneous fights. And then he spent 40 minutes straight, and I wanna repeat that, 40 minutes straight doing a card game. Don't get me wrong, if you enjoy your card games in your video games, that's totally fine. I know a lot of people enjoy Gwent from The Witcher 3, but DSP has to realize that his audience is not the audience to be sitting there for 40 minutes while he plays a card game that isn't going to matter at the end of the day. If he played for 15 to 20 minutes, that would have been one thing and we could have moved on and nobody would have cared. But it's the fact that he sat there for 40 minutes in almost defiance of his audience because they made it clear that they weren't interested and he very clearly wasn't having fun anyway. One of them did actually have meaningful side content that would have improved his game and the other one just doesn't and dsp decided to do the latter and that's the problem with me all right that's my that's exactly what i've been going through as a creator anyone else who does something in a, in a way it all works it's fine it's good we're grateful that they make content it's free content it's fun content they put hard work in this is amazing thank you so much best youtuber ever here's a community of supporters for dsp it's no matter what you do it's never good enough you're the laughing stock of the internet make fun whip this man bully him ruin his business ruin his life harass his family members that's all perfectly fine just because he's dsp and even when he actively does everything that you are asking for to change for the better still say it's not good enough Oh look, we're back to the pity party. I honestly forgot that we were even at this party. I got so lost in the sauce. But does this sound like a man who doesn't care what other people have to say about him on the internet? Does this sound like a man who isn't affected by the detractors and trolls online? Because it sounds to me like he cares. It sounds like he cares quite a bit, actually. I may be even getting hints of jealousy of other content creators in there, maybe? I don't know, sometimes it's hard to tell. I'm not exactly the most socially aware person on the planet. That's my life. I wish that was a gross exaggeration. It's literally not. That is my life. And I've just come to the point where I've accepted it. That it doesn't matter what I do to improve. People are still going to hate me for no reason. So I don't care. I'm going to improve for me. 
and for the audience that's actually here, okay? And then I'm going to move forward positively. I'm not going to listen when people say dumb shit like, don't do the side content of Final Fantasy VII. If you tell me not to do the side content of Final Fantasy VII, I'm going to say, don't watch an RPG playthrough, you idiot. Because that's what an RPG is. It's a role-playing game. You're pretending that you're a person in the game, running around doing content. That's the point of the game. If you skip all the content in a role-playing game, you might as well not play a role-playing game. What are you talking about? I don't think you actually understand what an RPG is, DSP. I don't know if you can actually list any of the aspects that go into making a game a role-playing game. I've had this conversation a hundred times and I could talk about it until the end of time, how I think that all video game genres are really stupid when you boil them down to the nitty gritty, but that's not really a discussion for now. But what I can say is I don't think that it's a good idea to constantly be telling your viewers to go somewhere else, to watch somebody else's content, to watch a different game. Because DSP seems to be doing that a lot recently. He's constantly telling people, if you don't like what I'm doing, instead of telling me to do it better, instead of giving me actual advice, actual criticism, feedback that I could use, just go somewhere else. Be someone else's pay pig. This entire segment is about how he listens to people's feedback and he changes what he does based off of that to appeal to his audience. How even though he's constantly trying, he seems to never succeed. But here we are in this exact same segment telling people that if they don't like the content, that they can just, I guess, eat shit and go somewhere else. Well, DSP, I think that everybody's still waiting on their spoons before they go and do that. So you might want to start expediting some of those packages. Okay? Now you might say, well then why did you skip the content of Zelda? Because that content sucked. In my opinion, the content was boring. If I could have skipped all of that content and easily beelined through the game and had fun with it still, then that content was meaningless. That content was padding, right? So there you have it. With Final Fantasy VII, I'm actually having fun with the side content, that's a lot different. So let's keep doing it, right? But according to you, DSP, simply having fun with that side content isn't making it meaningful. Because when you were talking about Zelda, if you were able to skip it and still beat the game easily, then it wasn't meaningful. But apparently when it comes to Final Fantasy, the only thing that matters is that it was fun. And I want to say this up front, if you're having fun with a mechanic in a game or you're having fun doing side quests that aren't meaningful, according to DSP, absolutely do them. You should be having fun with all of the games you play. That's why you play games, right? But that's not the situation that DSP is in. DSP doesn't just play games to have fun. He plays games for an audience. He's supposed to be an entertainer. He's supposed to be entertaining. If people aren't enjoying the game that you're playing, if people aren't enjoying the way that you're playing the game, then you need to change or you need to do something else. Because if you don't, you're just failing at your job. You're being unsuccessful. You're being a failure. And the other thing that I feel that people don't get is that when I am playing a game and I'm doing this kind of commentary, it's my opinion. You don't have to agree. You don't. You can completely disagree. Maybe you think the side content in Tears of the Kingdom was like the best side content out there. And therefore, that's why you were upset that I skipped it. You have the ability to think that. That's fine. I'm not going to sit here and say that's invalid. People like different things, different strokes for different folks. For me, I relayed intelligently why I didn't like the content. I felt like it was padding. I felt like the game was bloated. They put too much side content in. So, so much that it just takes up your time and isn't meaningful and I didn't care to do it. And I still enjoyed the game overall. I still really liked Tears of the Kingdom, right? I think, wasn't it in my Game of the Year countdown? So obviously I liked it. But people today, sadly, are just so black and white mentality. Like, I hate to say it, it's almost a simpleton's way of thinking. I love when DSP pretends to be smarter than everybody else in the room. Really is top notch, isn't it? But it's not black and white thinking on everybody else's behalf. It's actually a really reasonable conclusion to come to. If you watched DSP's Tears of the Kingdom playthrough, you know exactly how it went. He didn't seem to be having fun at almost any point. It's actually really similar to Baldur's Gate 3 in that sense. Because every time he talks about it, he likes to make it sound like he's having fun, like he's enjoying the game while constantly shitting on it and having nothing but negative things to say. But of course he loved the game, you guys. He put it on his totally arbitrary game of the year list to prove how much he loved it. As if that list couldn't be entirely fabricated simply so that he can call on it later, like he is, you know, right now. Either you like something or you hate it. No, that's not real life. In real life, it's not black and white, good and evil, like, dislike, right? There's many layers between of moderation, as they say, shades of gray. That's where the reality of life actually is. Just because I played Tears of the Kingdom and I didn't like an aspect of it doesn't mean it's a bad game, right? Just because I'm playing Final Fantasy VII and I'm loving it doesn't mean it's going to be my game of the year either.
But didn't you just say the other day that you're thinking that it's going to be your game of the year despite only being 11 hours into it? In fact, I think it was in the clip that we just played not that long ago. Hold on. Absolutely loving the game. I told you, actually, this is stacking up to be a great game. Maybe one of my game of the year picks, I'm thinking, right? Yeah, the first clip was from Sunday and this clip is from Monday. These are only a day apart. The flip-flop on this guy is insane. You know, but people don't get that. They literally just sit there thinking either you like it or you don't. So because Phil said that some of the side content of the Tears of the Kingdom was no good, right? That means the game sucks. No. No. Because Phil chose to skip the side content of Tears of the Kingdom, but now he's doing it in Final Fantasy VII. That makes him a hypocrite. No. It doesn't. But you have to be intelligent and mature to understand that. And sadly, a lot of people on the internet are not. They really have this childlike understanding of how things work on the planet, and that's not how the planet really works. Sorry, I don't need some guy who leaves his house once a week and lives in a gated community to tell me how reality works. But again, this is Mr. Shades of Grey, and he's sitting here refusing to acknowledge the fact that he completely quit doing all of the side content in Tears of the Kingdom, but decided to do all of the side content in Final Fantasy VII, instead of finding that happy middle ground that people would have actually appreciated on both sides. But remember guys, nothing is black and white. It's all Shades of Grey, 50 of them, if you could believe that. Okay. Um. Continuing on here, so anyway, yeah, in summary, I don't believe, no matter what I do, no matter how I do it, there's always going to be this consensus that Phil sucks. You know, look at how much I've improved, look at how much I've worked hard to improve my content over the last two years. Everything has improved. The quality of the, the video itself, the gameplay, the quality of the visuals of the webcam and the setup, thumbnails, titling, everything. And then what's the next, what's the next thing? Oh, it's still not good enough. You still got to change more. You still got to change more. You still got to change more. Listen, at what point do you say, okay, maybe it's not the fact of Phil, but it's the fact that there's such a mentality against Phil that he just sucks that that's what the reason why people think he sucks. Not because they actually watch the content and don't like it. It's because they just don't watch the content. They just say he sucks, right? <clears throat> there you go. You shouldn't be taking a step back and just accepting that everybody hates you and that you don't have to change anymore, DSP. Again, that's not how this should be working. You should constantly be trying to improve. You should always be thinking about ways that you can do your stream differently that's going to attract more people, that's gonna keep people coming back. Whether that be new titles, new thumbnails, new segments, new video games, new ways to play video games, new ways to interact with your chat, new elements on screen, new alerts, literally anything. Try to do anything different. As long as you put some sort of passion into it, as long as you care about it to some extent it should come through and people should reciprocate that but that's going to be the end of our second clip today which leads us right into our comment segment so of course shout out to all of my members i appreciate you guys so much got a boem says most streamers are variety streamers it's just a streamer who doesn't focus on one game they can go through and beat multiple games in the time phil takes to beat one the main difference is passion for the games which phil obviously doesn't have absolutely right there are so many variety style streamers out there and all of them are beating games more consistently and faster than DSP. And that's all due to a lack of passion on his end. Outback3587 says, I have a full-time job and I beat Baldur's Gate 3 in just a few weeks or so and have started multiple honor mode playthroughs. It's definitely doable. And I've had an influx in comments like this, people with full-time jobs and families. And I'm not talking about just a significant other and a cat. I mean a significant other and children. And they've told me they've managed to beat the game a bunch of different times in a multitude of ways. But that's obviously because they wanted to. To. DSP doesn't want to. He's not actually interested in the game. That's the real thing that's holding him back. It's not time, like he always indicates. And Kevin Major CA says, AAA immediate gratification movie game slop is especially made for people like Phil. No wonder that a game that is the antithesis of AAA slop is literal poison to him. Ack, ack, ack. At this point, I think he spent more time trying to self-pignosis himself into liking Baldur's Gate 3 than actually playing the damn thing. Well, Kevin, I was with you all the way up until the end because I don't think that DSP is trying to self-pignotize himself at all. I think the only person that he's interested in convincing that he likes the game is you, the viewer. And I don't mean you specifically Kevin I know you would never watch the guy but rather the dense because he thinks as long as they think that he's enjoying the game they're going to continue to give him infinite money it's a common tactic of his look no further than tears of the kingdom which we just talked about in this video speaking of this video shout out to everybody who watched this video especially if you made it this far hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video but until then make sure that you check out other detractor content and dive deeper into that snortex ah!